thank you. I'm so grateful for our shared devotional. It gives us, dare I say, an authentic opportunity to, to be still and practice the presence. And that's essential. I know for those of you who are at home or wherever you are on devices outside of the room, that it may be an odd practice. I just encourage you to join us in whatever way you can to just begin for those few moments that we are in stillness, to make that a part of what we do together. I'm trusting you're doing it on yourself and have that all worked out. I'm just encouraging that you include this shared practice of practicing the present together. It's powerful. Very, very powerful. Just as, and thank you for being with us last week, if you were, or if you're viewing the video later, we were celebrating sacred service. There's something about being in community, be doing this work, whatever the work is, be it the work of our spiritual practice, well, yeah, the work of our spiritual practice, which includes sacred service, being in service. I don't know how y'all grew up, but our parents in my household, that was a part of what you had to do. And I remember thinking, but are they going to pay me? Or how much? Mm. And that was like sacrilegious because the expectation of being paid for participating and giving of yourself was good training. Was I didn't think so at the time. I'm just, the, the candor here is important. I, I wasn't appreciating it in the moment. It was kind of a, well, all right, under duress, I'll serve. But in time, the serving won out. Do you understand what I'm saying? Where my spirit was refreshed. In, I couldn't have explained it to you. All I know is I was obedient, and it transformed my life. So last Sunday, that was our focus, that a reminder that sacred service feeds heart and soul, heart and soul center of light, but it also feeds each of us in terms of our individual heart and our individual soul. Now, you won't know this unless you're engaged in sacred service. Otherwise, I'm just like, you know, in the cartoons, what it says, what a cat hears is just kind of your lips popping together. Nothing else. But other than that, but if you're serving, then you're in a place of, yes, what she's saying is true. Dare I say, I know it's old, but try it, you'll like it. Yeah. Try it, please. And we need you. We need you. Even if we didn't need you, if we had people just lined up and we could heart, I would still be offering you an opportunity to serve. Why? Because I know it will transform your life, which is the same reason we ask you to give, because it transforms your life, the sacred practice of giving, of your time, of your talent, of your treasure. So we need you to give of your time, of your talent, and of your treasure. So reach out to us so that we can see how we can best include you. And we'll work it out. Now look, let me just say this about that, because sometimes, you know, nobody wants us to be operating like a corporate organization. Until you reach out and somebody doesn't get back to you, and then in that moment, you want to know just what is going on over there. Just how are they running the thing? Well, we're running it with volunteers. We're running it with people, which is why I'm speaking to you about this, because the more folks who come forward, the more likely we are to be able to get back to you and have things set up in a way that you'd really like, but we probably need you in the mix in order to have all that happen. Yes? Okay, I need you to just feel me this morning because we need you to join us and offer of your gifts in sacred service. That's how we do summer school. 
summer school, those folks that you see um, acting either in person, if you were if you're in the room in past years, or when you are, when we do it via Zoom for the, this is our third year that it's been virtual, all of that is sacred service. And it is amazing. We do it as a, as a work of love, as an offering of love. And so we on this, we've completed our th three sessions, our four, and it's still not too late. It's never too late to get in on some of this good stuff. Now, clearly, you can't get in in the fourth session and all of a sudden be present like you've been there for all four sessions. But you'll get more than you would if you didn't come. And so I'm encouraging you always to, to get the part that you can get, to get in and see if you can't expand, if we can't support you in that. So today's talk is also drawn from our read for summer school, The Four Pivots, Reimagining Justice, Reimagining Ourselves. So I want you to know that Many of you already have the book, but if you don't, we still have some copies. So you can, and I would encourage you to get the book from us for the obvious reason. If you make an immediate donation of $20 or more to Summer School 2022 at heartsoulcenter.org slash SS2022book, you can either pick it up here, you can either pick it up here, it seems like, I'm going to keep talking because y'all will catch up. Um, if you cannot, there we go. Here we go, some sound. So um, if you make the donation, you can either pick up the book here on a Sunday or we can mail it to you, whatever works best for you. I want to remind you also that there is a phenomenal podcast with the author of The Four Pivots, Dr. Sean Jinwright, and Brene Brown. And it is, now it's an hour and a half, so set yourself up or do it in parts. I just don't let the fact that I say it's an hour and a half stop you. I say it so that you can set yourself up to win. Break off the pieces you can spare in the moment or just kick back and know that you're going to cover the whole thing. It is absolutely worth it. If you're feeling like, well, not right now, Reverend Andriette, but I'd love to get a little something, something. Well, then I got a little something, something for you because... On the back of the book is a QR code that we're going to put up on the screen now. If you click for, if you, you know, pull up your phone, smartphone, and engage the camera, it will take you to a Vimeo, a video that uh, Dr. Sean Jinwright created. So I just want you to get in the pool with us. Get wet, splash some of this. If you can't attend, but you can get the book or you can at least watch the videos or you can listen to the podcast, there's something about the community being on the same page. That's, that's a real thing, by the way. You know what I mean? That Each and every one of us, I want you to at least have a piece of this so that you know what we're up to and you have a sense of being in it yourself. Even if you're sitting in a lawn chair, kick back, somebody's in the deep end of the pool, but we're all there partaking according to, you know, I just got to say it, you got to get in where you fit in. How, how so never you can fit in, get in there. And it's all right. It's all right. There's no shame in anybody's game in terms of however it's going to work. So look, in the four pivots, pivot number one, which we covered during the first week of summer school, lens to mirror, it's about awareness. Then in week two, we talked about the second pivot, which is transactional to transformational, which is about connection. You know, in transactional, it's, it's a connection, but it's not much. Transformational, though, has us bring our spirit to it, bringing our whole being to it, and that's about connection. So the third pivot, which is the one that we covered last Wednesday, was about problems to possibility. It's about vision. We played with this notion of what if? What if we could vision it a little differently or a lot differently? What if we could see beyond our current pain or trauma or disappointment? What if? 
It's about vision. Next week, I'm mean, sorry, this week on Wednesday, we will be talking about his um, fourth pivot is hustle to flow. And that's about presence. And this is why I'm reminding you that when we begin our service with a devotional, it could be the time that feels like I'll run, get coffee, I'll do the other things that I'm in. It's the devotional. It's practicing the presence. And this notion of presence is, a fourth, is the fourth pivot. So we're going to be getting to that next uh, on this Wednesday, and we'll be talk I'll be talking about it here next Sunday. So, but for today, I want to focus on our third pivot, problems to possibility and around vision. In the book, in the four pivots, for the fourth pivot, in the, um, on that very first page, now why are you looking for it, Andrea, when you have what you need on the slide? Just trying to be, do, have something else happen. Here we go. So, um, for, he has at the very beginning of that fourth pivot, there is a quote. And the quote is taken from, um, that's not where I meant to be at all. My mistake, sorry. Okay. It's where he is talking about outlook. I'm going to stop looking at the book because now I've gotten confused with that. But there's a quote that he offers from Dr. Cornell West's book. And in this, the quote that he uses just um, excerpts from Dr. It's an excerpt from Dr. Maya Angelou. But I want you to have the, the whole thing. I want to set a context here because it's a conversation between Dr. Cornell West and Dr. Maya Angelou, all right? So Dr. Maya Angelou says, and I'm, you know, I'm just cutting in here and, and citing these two pieces. So Dr. Maya Angelou says, African-American people have nursed nations of strangers, somehow saying, however you are, however backward you are in your humanness, I have the responsibility of treating you like a human being. I know I am a child of God. This is what gives me the stuff to get up. This is why a spiritual practice, practicing the presence is so essential because the world, you know how uh, this joy that I have, the world don't give it to me? This presence of love and inclusion, the world doesn't give it to me. That has to be an inside job. In fact, the world is almost set up as a pop quiz. So, you know, when we announce to the world, I am loving, I am accepting, the world is like, okay, let's see. Let's just see. Is this in all situations and circumstances? Or is it just for your best friends? Is it just for the people you like and not the people on the job and not the people at the public services and not the people at the utility companies? You know, or let's just see. If that's the truth about you, are you taking responsibility for treating yourself and others like a human being? So she goes on to say, this is what gives me the stuff to get up. Now my work, the onerous task I have is to remember to be reminded always that the bigot, the brute, and the batterer are also, they are also children of God, whether they know it or not. She says, it's up to me. And I want to say I'm sharing it, and I think Dr. Sean did too in the book, because it's not singular to Dr. Maya. It's not like, oh, that was her, and so now that she's with the ancestors, that's over, done. Check that off. That's like a message to us of how we're to be. And y'all know this is not a mountaintop teaching, so this is not a place where I can just wax eloquent about my own experience. I could entertain you for hours about the stops and starts 
about all the times in prayer and in my meditation and in my moments where I was clear that I dedicated my life to it being the way that I envisioned it, and then somebody called me <laughs> or pulled up next to me in traffic or made a turn. Because, you know, sometimes I'm just the traffic police. I've never been hired to be that. <laughs> but I have set aside my spiritual practice and commitment for some unknown person in a car that I couldn't even describe to you now. Just abdicated the spiritual practice from me telling them off in my car. Because I'm not into road rage, so I'm not even rolling down the window to say nothing to nobody. I'm just abdicating my spiritual practice in the driver's seat. I'm not messing up nobody's life but mine. Not disturbing nobody's peace but mine. Is this making sense? Because I trust that I'm not the only one. I'm the only one telling it this morning, but I know I'm in good company. So the idea here is for me to know it. That's what she's saying to us. Because if we misunderstand it, this may sound laborious. This may sound like we should now to, ought to have to do this. But that's not the message. The message is that it's ours to do. That no matter what, this is not a message that if you kept reading it, it goes to and other people are, mm -mm, this ain't about them like my mama used to. I ain't talking about them. Because I don't know what went on in your household, but I was always trying to invoke what was going on down the block and the other people at school and people I know. And what. And she's like, I'm not talking about them. They don't live here. But, mm -mm. And these other people that you want to get told and get straightened out, they don't live in you as you. But the one who does, this is the one in the mirror moment, isn't it? This is a get, get her straight. I said to me, let's get her straight. Let's do, let's talk to her. Let's work it out with her. Because these other people we can't even name, and even if we can, not your business. Let's get him straight, the one in the mirror, the one you can work with, the one who, who on a good day will listen to you. You hear me? So in this conversation, Dr. West replies, he says, when I hear that, when I hear what Dr. Maya just said, he said, I think of those black folks who have had the courage to be free under conditions of unfreedom. Right here in our sanctuary, Mother Harriet is our matron saint because she represents exactly what Dr. West just spoke of. Those black folks who had the courage to be free under conditions of unfreedom. Somebody better write that down. I know y'all can take photos with your little smartphones and all, but do not miss the opportunity to engage every aspect of your thinking and your mental capacity by writing it. See, we don't want the smartphone to be smarter than you. So get yours. Write some, some of this down. Not that you, just the writing of it. See, that's another class about what to, how to do it. Okay, looky here. Dr. West says, because, now I have to repeat that. He said, I, when I think about, when I hear what she said, Dr. Maya, I think about those black folks like Mother Harriet who have had the courage, like Frederick Douglass, who have had the courage to be free under conditions of unfreedom. He said, because there is no way that the black freedom movement could ever have begun and sustained itself unless there were some New World Africans who said, I am free. Come on, Mother Harriet, help me out with this. And I will speak my mind and will do whatever I have to do, even in a situation in which I am defined as an unfree person. Now look, I, un I fully understand and appreciate 
that some of us, when we tune into the news and the 2022 news sounds like it might be from 1962 or 1936 or 1920, we, if we mess around with that too much, our disappointment infects our consciousness. And once our consciousness is infected with the virus of, I don't believe it's ever going to be no better. I need to, we can't afford it. We, we, you can't bring that to the party. You, you know how we say that with the virus, whatever the virus is, if you're feeling some symptoms, stay home. We love you. Don't misunderstand that. But we don't, we love you, but we, we don't, we don't want to be around you under those circumstances. So that's for the physical, kind of medical, biological virus, but it's also true about the consciousness virus. The virus of it don't get no better. I'm going to need you to keep that to yourself while you're being treated. For that. Do, do you understand what I'm saying? Because you could infect a lot of people. Like I appreciate that I'm the only one in the room right now without a mask on. And I would have it on except there wouldn't nobody be able to understand what I was saying. <laughs> but everybody else has one on. Why? Because we want to make do everything we can not to infect each other. But I want this to happen at a level of consciousness as well. Because sometimes these ideas of ain't it awful are f get followed by and it's getting worse. And I'm just like, if you're going to predict stuff, I'm going to need you to reach higher. Because I, I appreciate your prophetic nature, but I'm going to need it to be on a more optimistic note. Because if you're going to predict how it's going to all work out, I'm going to need you to raise your... <laughs> I need you to look up. I need your eyes to the hills. I, from which cometh... <laughs> Come on now. I'm going to need you to look beyond the problem, which is what that song is about is looking beyond it to where the good, from, once, from whence the good comes. So it's not that there isn't stuff happening, but you focused on the stuff that is happening is not helpful. Now, if you have a job, if you're the surgeon, I need you focused on that wound and getting of whatever it is, and the, I need you absolutely, you're excused. But if you're just standing on the side, being prophetic, I'm going to need you to make something else up better. And I'm glad you're hanging out with us because we teach how to do that. You have options. You have a complete spectrum of options from which you can choose as a predictive outcome. And I'm going to need you to lean in <laughs> on the side that is more like what we want as the collective outcome. You can't just be prophetic about the worst case scenario and then rest your case. Like, you know, I said it now. I'm going to need you to stop saying it because it's not true. But we could mess around and reinforce the not true at a level where it still won't be true, but it can be our experience. But I love Dr. Cornell West said some New World Africans. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. His word. So we're going to have to be some New World Africans who are firm. And this is not about ethnicity, by the way. This is about consciousness. So, you know, we, we, we got a community here where we mix it up. 
but I'm going to need us to all be New World Africans. Because when we think about the seat of civilization, meaning where humanity began, we's all Africans. So all we're saying is let's be some New World Africans, like some New Thought Christians. It's a similar kind of idea here. Be some New World Africans who affirm I am free and will speak my mind and do what I have to do. Now, you only going to know what you have to do if you sit and still long enough to discern it. Because every idea is not I have to do. Some of it isn't even I, I ought to do that. So, you know what I mean? A lot of this is just misinformation based on a bad diet. A little odd meal will have you thinking some strange stuff. Y'all understand what I'm talking about. Drink some, eat some, and you be doing, no. This is like bring all that in to a place of clear consciousness where you're affirming that even in a situation in which I am defined as an unfree person, I am free and will speak my mind to that. So among our New World Africans, there's some folks who are not melanated to the degree that I am. These are our allies. I'm going to need you all to stand and speak. You, you know what I'm saying? Because there's an opportunity as New World Africans for me to speak for me and you to speak for you. But at some point, I'm probably going to need you to speak for me too because that's just the way we've designed it so far. You, you understand what I'm saying? It, I think I'd be remiss if I didn't lay out the whole program here. Yes? All right. So he says, for me, Lord, I hope y'all slide is, because he, oh, good, thank you, because mine says four. <laughs> for me, this has to do, this is Dr. Uh, West speaking, for me, this has to do with being able to view yourself in the light of a story that is bigger than your life. Come on, talk about vision. Talk about vision. And what are we working with in vision but our imagination? Oh, so look, this is a call to, to imagine. See, this is, we're not called to be uh, we can't all be news broadcast people just saying what happened. Some of us have to imagine a different outcome. Some of us have to imagine from a different place, from a, a new. You see, John Lennon wrote it like this. He said, no need for greed or hunger. A brotherhood of man. He says, imagine all the people sharing all the world. <laughs> and I know this is true. I know some of y'all can't resist saying kind things about me. And among them would be that I'm a dreamer. But I've come this morning to say I'm not the only one. I live and work and play among those folks that have already joined the dream or already actively imagining another outcome where the children are educated, where the children are fed so that they have, so that they can be educated, so that they can learn. Does that make sense? So that they're safe, so that they're sleeping. So that whatever trauma can be healed, someday, John Lennon writes, someday I hope you'll join us and the world will live as one. That was Thomas Hughes. And we acting like he's a guest. <laughs> But I'm just, and I'm just so grateful for his musicianship and vocals this morning. Imagine, just imagine. That's our job. 
That's our work. That's our spiritual practice to imagine. Thank you, John Lennon, for laying that out in such a timeless way that every time we hear it, we get something else. And if you don't, then I need you to dig a little deeper. You're not trying hard enough. Because there's something more there each time for the open heart, for the open mind. Yes? Imagine, look, in the four pivots, Dr. Qu Dr. Sean quotes from Robin Kelly, who is our beloved Makani Timba's brother. His book, Freedom Dreams, this is the 20th anniversary of the publishing of Freedom Dreams, but in it, Robin Kelly says, imagination may be one of the most revolutionary ideas available to us. That's what Thomas was just singing about. Using our imagination as a change, as a mechanism for change. It, to begin our process. You see, whatever is going on right now, you don't have to imagine that. Because that already has some weight in your mind, in your awareness. Does that make sense? It may not, it may not even have taken full form while you're waiting for the call to come. But look, I'm saying to you, this is true. You can trust it. Imagine a different outcome. Watch this. Because if what's the alternative? What's the alternative? So you're waiting for the phone call at, with dread, absolute dread, from your lover, from your boss, from the landlord, from the fill in the blank. But you can feel the dread in your spirit, yes? And you're waiting. What are you telling yourself? The more, if, if, if you are dreading it more, if the level of dread is rising, I can tell you what you're telling yourself, that you write about what's about to happen. And you're probably adding on to it. So you started with, they're going to call and say, and, I, and oh, and then, and that's going to mean, and then it's, I may as well just give, when you finish adding on, the weight of it, now, you may not, if you do this a lot, you don't even notice the physical impact of it, the cost to bear that you are choosing. But I invite you to begin right where you are. Begin imagining that sure enough, it's a message about whatever. But imagine the impact on you. Imagine that it's not just bad news. That whatever it is, it has a blessing for you. You know, I remember people, elders trying to tell me stuff that didn't make no sense at the time. I was, they were like, just you wait till you get old. And I was like, how'd you get to be so? How? Now, none of it would I say aloud or allow my face to even give an indication, but I was thinking, they don't know nothing about life. <laughs> but I have now had enough birthdays. I've done just enough living where I now get it. So even though this may not make sense, I have now turned into my parents and their generation. <laughs> Why say just keep living? And at some point you'll see the blessing You'll see the blessing in that shift. But don't, you, don't rush to judgment. Don't try to make it up right now unless it helps you to get through it. If it allows you to catch your breath, if it allows you to sleep nights, then go ahead and make it up. To ease, just be open to the divine unfoldment. Does that make sense? That imagination he says, maybe one of the most revolutionary ideas available to us. There is absolutely no question that it is, in my mind. We were doing, week before, last week, I don't know when, one, mirror work. When did we start mirror work? Week before last. Yes, last. 
We did it last week for the first week. Whatever. Whatever. Here's the deal. We did some mirror work, and we still doing it. So whatever the dates were for the beginning, and it ain't ended, so we're not there. We did some mirror work, and we decided we're going to keep doing some mirror work. Because we are imagining ourselves to ourselves. Some of what was said when we did our check-in, especially from folks who who were not inclined to do it or not inclined to do it fully, that there was some sense of this, I'm not telling myself the truth. But I just offer, I'm not clear we know the truth. I could turn this into a Jack Nicholson moment. (laughs) You know, I'm not clear we can handle the truth. Because the truth about us is that we're divine beings. You ain't ready. You ain't ready or the, or the mirror work wouldn't be an issue. If you already knew you were a divine being, what did Dr. Maya say? That I'm a child of God. I'm a divine being. Who I am matters. If that's not true for you, it don't make it not true. It just means you haven't caught up with it yet. So we're doing our mirror work five minutes a day so that we can bring our awareness into alignment with what's true. See, we're not there yet. And that's okay. That's not a complaint. That's not a judgment. There's no blame in it. We have work to do, but we knew that. Didn't nobody get up on Sunday morning and come to church that don't know there's work to do? But don't nobody roll over and get the remote and tune into this unless you already know. I'm not, this isn't an announcement. I, this is a confirmation. We already know we got work to do. And I'm just specifying that some of it is mirror work. Talk to the one in the mirror. Get it clear. So for today, our mirror work, our five-minute mirror work is to declare, I see you. Ooh, you could just be with that for a while. I see, and some of us need to, because we haven't really seen ourselves. We kind of see, we, we, what we do in the mirror is not see. We are masters at not seeing ourselves and just seeing what the eyebrow work, the lipstick work, the hair work. Come on, fellas, you just looking for the part, that it, is, it too, is the little fuzz there where I need to get that off? Yes. So we're busy in the mirror trying not to see ourselves. Counterintuitive, and yet what we've come to. So this is to begin with, I see you, beloved. I see you, Andriette. I see you, whatever my nickname is for me that you don't need to know. I see you. I love you. Talk to you like you talk to you. It's you. Be with you. Y'all close. Y'all been knowing each Y'all been together a long time. Talk to you like you know you. Like you like you. Like we trying to get together here. Y'all know that voice. You know the voice that is expressing the openness to being together. That voice. Use that. Oh, I so appreciate you for. And if you need to tweak this, I so appreciate that you. What if just get it done? Oh, I appreciate you. And then rock with that. It's five minutes, which can, if you don't do this at all, this can wear you out. Frankly, if you do it, it can wear you out. But be willing to be worn out. Because you was going to be worn out anyhow. Doing some foolishness. So yes, our mirror work, we're using our imaginations to bring us along. Is this making sense? Am I just out here on my own? Yeah, okay, so we're using our imaginations toward our greater good by reminding us of a truth that we've not spent time on yet or not spent extended time. And five minutes, you know, when I say it, it just sounds like, but do your little mirror work. And you see that you got plenty time in five minutes to work with you. 
Now, that's probably why we don't do it. We'd be like, can I get some other people in here? Because we're not really trying to spend just five minutes. And, you know, I suggested last week, if you really want to go for the goal, we're probably not ready to get naked and do it. Or do what somebody called the butt naked mirror work. But if you're ever ready, it will reveal the truth to you about you because won't be nothing there but you. You won't be, ooh, straightening the collar. You won't be trying to adjust the glasses or get the earrings so that they, you know, you just be you. Just you, available to you. This is good stuff, y'all. Look, in the four pivots, this is in, at the end of that third pivot, it's about outlook that Dr. Sean is talking about. And so, uh, did I? I did not. I thought I made a note about what page that was, but I did not. Well, it is page 199. So on page 199, after he has shared about interviewing someone he knows who is a white nationalist, you know, just to be willing, just to be willing to have that authentic conversation. Let me just props to you, my brother, just right there. And then to share it. So look, that takes him someplace, that whole thing does. And this is what he says about it. He says, I think our outlook, our attitudes, values, and vision about the future has been like dancing in concrete. You better cut a phrase, baby. It's been like dancing in concrete. I need us to picture that. Dancing not on concrete which has its own challenges, dancing in concrete. How much movement you think is happening? <laughs> I'm just saying. Where our political and social divisions have gotten us stuck. A pivot to possibility, he says, means that we have to cultivate another outlook. We got to do our mirror work. Because we're what cultivating another outlook where we can see each other. I'm adding where we can see ourselves. Because until you can see you, you're not likely to see other people. you likely to see what kind of lens frames they have. you likely to notice they got a new color to their hair. Or they didn't added some hair, taking it all away. You likely to notice a lot of stuff about people. That's a good color on you. That's you noticing. But you're not likely to see each other. It's your mirror work that is training you to, I see you. We're not likely, he says, to see each other, even if we don't agree. He says, pivot. A pivot to possibility means that we have to cultivate another outlook where we can see each other even when we don't agree. He says, I think the most important lesson I've learned here is that we have a long road of healing our divisions. The greatest challenge before us is not simply a political, economic, or social transformation. Rather, the greatest challenge we face is failure to try another way. Do some butt-naked mirror work, though, and you'll be open to another way. Because you'll see yourself by necessity through a new lens. He says, I know that taking a third position, which is what he committed to doing before he reached out to the man, he says, I know that th taking a third position is not a panacea to heal the wounds of the legacy of America's racial trauma, nor will it resolve continued harm caused by economic inequality. If we look deep within for a moment and ask how we can change our outlook, 
we will at least be on the right track. Do your mirror work. He ends this piece by saying the pivot to possibility has to start within first. Do your mirror work. We have to all want something better for ourselves, which means you got to see yourself first before you go know what's better for you. Our communities and the world. He says, I've heard someone say that if we want something we've never seen, we'll have to do something we've never tried. But naked mirror work is what's being implied here, I'm sure. <laughs> he, says, he says, I hope that we grapple with our own outlook on our society. Now, you know what? Part of me just wants to say that if somebody invited you to the service and this is your first time tuning in, <laughs> this is probably the, only the eighth time I've ever said butt naked <laughs> mirror work. So that's not like what we do all the time. <laughs> I'm just trying to say it enough today that we can start a new thing and we don't have to say it out loud. We'll just be about it. So if this is your first time, do not, you know, I know your pearls have been duly clutched <laughs> at this point, but just exhale with us and just know I am, you know, if you know me, if you hang around long enough to get to know me, I will do whatever it takes. I would get up here on this tabletop and dance if I thought that that would make the difference. I know it won't, so I'm not. But if I thought it would, I would do, you know, I've dressed up in costumes. I have done all manner of things in order to deliver an idea because I know we I know we hide behind so much that sometimes it takes some shenanigans to break through. And I, I, you know, I'll be about the shenanigans. I don't care nothing about that. I'll do whatever it takes. But Dr. Sean says here that he says, I hope that we grapple with our own outlook on our society and that we will strive to see the humanity and those folks who we vehemently disagree with. He says a pivot to possibility ain't easy, but who said that justice and peace would come easy? Nicely wrapped in a bow. Nobody said that. And so we're going to have to do the work. Look here. The truth is, that God is good. The truth is that today is a lovely day. That's the truth. Now, I know there's stuff going on. There's war and there's assassinations. There's stuff going on. That does not change the fact that God is good and that today, in the words of Bill Withers, is a lovely day. Now, you can either line up on the side where you'll give testimony about how that's not true and then get to live in that, or you can line up on the side to give testimony that even if you've not experienced the lovely aspect of today yet, you're believing that it's coming, like the little boy looking for the pony. You're expecting, you're in anticipation of the lovely day, yes, that Bill Withers says, when the day that lies ahead of me, and it always does, or there's no point, you just historical in nature otherwise. When the day that lies ahead of me seems impossible to face, when someone else instead of me always seems to know the way, he says, when I look at you, when I look at y'all, no, watch this, when I look at me in my mirror work now, when I look at me and, the, and I know that the world is all right with me, I know what? It's going to be a lovely day. That we know, I know and I know that I know that the whole perfect and complete nature of the divine surrounds and enfolds me right now. That there is truly not a spot where God is not. 
that the living one, the strong one, is literally breathing me right now. Even as I am breathing the breath of the living one, the strong one, it is breathing me. I am literally living the life of the living one, the strong one, even as the living one, the strong one, is living me. And that is true for all of us, that we are all breathing the breath of the living one, the strong one, and the living one, the strong one, is breathing breathing each and every one of us, that we are all living the life, the divine life of the living one, the strong one, and the living one, the strong one is living each and every one of us. Truly, there is not a spot where the divine energetic presence, the all in all, is not. And so knowing that, I know that whatever prayer is held in heart or choked back on a throat or, or just forming now in mind, I know that it's already done, whole, perfect, and complete in the mind of the divine. I know that it's not required that I name each person or cite each situation or possibility because it is all known. And what I know is the truth. I know that the divine is, God is, the living one, the strong one is, Allah, Jehovah, it all is, Jah is and all is well. I know that it may not appear to be well, and yet I know that within the problem, perceived problem, is the solution. And so what I know for sure is that all is well in God, so it must be well in me. It must be well in us. It must be well in life. And that as I see me in my mirror work, I see the divine. I see the infinite possibility unflowing, unfolding, manifesting, demonstrated in my life, in life. I know that what is true for me is simply true. There's no like special law for me. If it's true for me, it's simply true. If it's true for him and her, it's simply true. And so right now, I just invoke the truth. The truth that the divine presence surrounds and enfolds each and every one of us from the top of our head to the bottom of our feet, in and throughout. Each and every one of us is imbued with the full power and presence of the divine, the love, the joy, the peace, the health and well-being. Oh, I just give thanks. I give thanks for the clarity of this word, for the way that I can stand in it knowing that it's done and done well in the divine, that nothing is missing. That what I'm calling out, I'm acknowledging within. And that that is sufficient to know the truth and rely on the truth. Oh, I give thanks. It is an absolute perfect gratitude that I simply release this word into the perfect activity of law. That I turbocharge this word with my knowing, with my faith, with my belief. And I know that it cannot possibly return void, that it must absolutely produce in like kind. And for this, too, I am grateful. And I simply let it be. Sealing it for all eternity, I say, Ashe. Amen. And so it is. Love matters.